Calvin's always loved doodling. Ever since his formative years when he was growing up, he loved the idea of putting things down onto paper or organising cars or objects into lines or colours or shapes to try and articulate what he doesn't usually say and doodling's a vital part of that communication for Calvin. Calvin didn't speak until he was in his first year at primary school when we had our two-year health visitor come over. Uh, we knew there was a problem. Uh, he wasn't walking, he wasn't sitting up properly and he wasn't vocalising. Well, he loved articulating. He, he, would, he would express himself but it was very much non-verbal. So he would use sign language or point or uh, use grunts or consonants to try and get across what it was he wanted to do. Can you remember the sign for toy car? Can you? He didn't do so well at, at, at uh, standard school. They were really kind. They tried everything they could to include him. Calvin would sit down with his homework and, and we'd look at it, look at each other, look at Calvin. Calvin would put his fingers in his mouth and his eyes would widen and he'd shrug and that was pretty much how school days went. He wasn't showing autism, but he was showing something. He wasn't showing his ADHD, but he was something. You just know that something isn't right. It was that not knowing bit that was the hardest bit, but there was no support for it because, because there was, no one could pigeonhole it and no one could say, this is what was wrong with him. We, we didn't know what was going on. Uh, we didn't know how to react or what to do to make Calvin's life as, as productive or as easy as possible. What we got was a bunch of specialists in lots of different departments saying, nope, that must be a heart thing, or nope, that must be a brain thing. I suggest you go here next. And so we were bounced from pillar to post, essentially. Uh, and that's what life is like for a child with no diagnosis that clearly has challenges at school and in his personal life as well. The letter that came from the geneticist that said Calvin had a uh, change in the gene, CACNA1C. This was the first time we knew we were dealing with a genetic problem and it was the first time that the heart had been mentioned. Without the genetic investigations that happened, I don't think we'd have ever found out what was going on with Calvin. We had absolutely no choice but to become experts in our own situation. We have to become advocates for our own kids. I mean, this, this is our son. This is, this is our son in a file. This is from... A file? We've got four. From four files. That's from more. From when he had his two-year check uh, that started the whole investigation to the present day and I, I, you know the last one's the last one's full um, and they start actually with interesting letters saying don't worry I'm sure everything will be all right there's probably just a bit of a speech delay uh, all the way through to to where we are now which is uh, well it's a diagnosis of sorts but it's it's another step down the road I have Turner fee syndrome it is a rare multi-system disorder caused by genetic changes in the L-type calcium channel gene, CACNA1C. There are around 43 patients in the world, most of them children like me. Timothy Sear syndrome presents major health concerns which can include heartbeat problems, brain development delays, joints of fingers and toes, weak immune system, low blood sugar, tummy and dental problems, plus more barbicides. The point of diagnosis is a bit of a blow. It's, it's, although it's an answer, it's not necessarily one you'd want to receive. And we decided early on after this diagnosis that um, we looked at it and we said, knowledge is power. Mummy and Daddy found a Facebook group with other families. 
just like ours. We found friendship um, and information and support and a place to talk openly about um, everything that we'd been through. It made a big difference, didn't it? Because we essentially we were on our own. Even after we had a diagnosis of sorts, we were still on our own because there was no one else that, that had experience of this. We've done so much work on it now that we tend to know more about the syndrome and the, the physical effects and the, and the symptoms that present themselves every day than any doctor does because no one studies this particular aspect of, of genetic change, at least not in its, its final form, which in this case is Calvin. We didn't know what was going to happen to Calvin and we still don't. In fact, the fact that uh, uh, so many children die and, but Calvin is still here uh, uh, gives us hope every day, which is fantastic. But going by the mantra of knowledge is power, we have to try and find more and more of it and, and, and build answers and solutions, not just for Calvin, but for the other children too, and the ones that are coming after him. We are going to find some answers. And that all began with our first family day in, in, in Cardiff. Coming to the family day um, here in Cardiff, it's just, it's connection with other people. It's hope, family, extended family, people who are going through the same thing, people who have had who have children with Timothy syndrome who have gone through different journeys but you can still relate to them. It's, it's a relief to know you're not alone. With the charity, I think, first of all, I was like, what would I really want? And I thought, well, I want answers. And I thought, how do you go about getting the answers? And that is research. That is doctors in the UK knowing that this condition isn't just Timothy syndrome, it's like a spectrum because the kids can be so different but yet so alike and, and I think the research part goes such a long way to doctors having a better understanding. <sighs> There's been a lot of emotions this weekend, they've been really high when you first meet somebody and you're like, I've got somebody else I can speak to and then suddenly realising I think I'm one of the lucky ones. When you're told that your child is going to be, you know, you want to outlive your child, it's like the worst fear ever, isn't it? I mean, every day counts for these kids. So this weekend has helped us so much and it will do because we're all coming together and even though all of our children have the same condition, they are also different in so many ways. So meeting the other children as well is nice you know, to see them getting older and growing due to the awareness and the new information that we have now. That's nice to, to be a part of, yeah. If you can just cope two days with this, you're amazing already. It's, it's a lot to accept as a parent that your child's got a life-limiting condition, so if you're getting up every day and fighting after knowing that, then you're just amazing anyway, aren't you, you know? <laughs> having a group of people all pushing together to get answers and to drive potentially more research, etc. I think it, more heads together, without a doubt, definitely helps, I think. And I think we all bring different parts of that jigsaw puzzle probably together. Well, I think the collaborative effort is absolutely wonderful. This is a very rare disease, so I, you know, we're just going to be, be helped by the doctors who see these kids. We have a lot to do to educate the medical community that this is really out there and for them to be specifically looking for it so that we can save these babies, first and foremost. If you are a family affected by Timothy syndrome or medical professional caring for a child with this condition and would like to find out more, please get in touch 
We'd love to hear from you. We are stronger together. It's good to know you're not alone.